Fuck off. Get lost. Okay. Let's see if try again. Part two. Take two. Take two. Let's see if it's working now. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So it looks like it's working now. Looks like YouTube's back. It looks like we got some nice smooth network. All green. That's what I'd like to see. And I'll just show you what I'm doing just before I, what I'm doing right now is I'm just looking over here's Facebook over down here is YouTube. So I'm going to click on here. Right here is DLive, and I don't know what the hell it's doing. It's just not showing up. And over here is my network. So right now, see what says zero, zero? That means there's no drop frames. That means everything's good. So it's weird that DLive just is spinning and spinning and not going anywhere. Anyhow, I'm just going to start. Screw it. Okay. So I'm going to continue working on this painting. The Red Rocket. My corner trick is failing. So I really should be working on the old bus or TGC thing, but I don't feel like thinking right now. And this requires a bit of effort. So I'm going to go and just fart around with the landscape some more. And like, uh, I think I'm going to go in and see if I can zoom in. Yeah. Like just make more interesting little patterns in here. My dog is being funny. Yeah, just goof around a bit. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm just going to pause the other stuff. We don't need that running. Someone was listening to me who, this afternoon while driving in their car. <laughs> that's that's uh, it's kind of odd. A little odd for me. What should I do? I know. I think I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do patterns. Let's say I'm gonna do little vertical patterns here. No, I'm gonna do vertical patterns down here on the horizon. Yeah. Just these vertical kind of shapes coming down. Got my cute doggy next to me. What are you doing? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> hello, baby. How are you? I just gotta say hello. Hello, baby. How are you? How are you, baby? How are you? Do you want to come up and say hi? Yes, you do. Oh, you are so beautiful. Look how cute you are. You love me, don't you? Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Look how cute you are. Oh, yes, boy. She will lick me forever. You lick me forever. Okay, can you go down? I don't want you to slip. Go on. Good girl. All right. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Oh yeah, I forgot. I gotta see if anyone's chatting. I gotta click on the chat button, whatever it's called. Okay. the bottom what am I gonna do at the bottom maybe this this green isn't so good How 
put a let's make some yellow and green. Let's see what's all this now. <clears throat> oh, this is a John. This is a. I joined an art kind of group, and uh, they had a submission call for the Red Rocket, which is a this kind of a streetcar in Toronto where I grew up. I used, to, I used to have to take this stupid thing all the time as a kid. And I figured maybe I'll I'll participate and do a painting of the Red Rocket. And I just didn't want to... This is the... Right, oh, here's a picture of... This is the picture I'm using over here. It's... Uh, so I just didn't want to do just a picture. I just... Uh, so I threw, I threw it in like a... One of my little foresty things. That's about it. I can tell you I'm not I'm not looking forward to painting it because I don't like um, I don't enjoy painting things that are man-made mostly because it requires I don't know it just you're just recreating someone else's creation you know it's it's already there's something about nature that's just nicer it just flows like you can just make some squiggles and your brain interprets as something interesting That's why I like doing these these foresty things because I can just make it up. I can just make it up, and uh, like it's enjoyable to do. I actually like doing this. I don't like doing this. I'm just trying to decide how I'm going to do it. Like keep it kind of painterly. And when I'm doing these patterny things, I'm thinking about uh, Gustav Klimt's landscapes. He he was did some pretty cool stuff, which I only kind of like got into recently, like in the past year or so. Never really delved as deep as I have until recently. And he was just really cool about making these patterns and different things happening. So that's kind of what I feel like doing. I feel like just slapping down some paint and seeing seeing what kind of effects it can make like I'll, I'm gonna put all these little tiny little little things which I'm, I'm hoping each one is like can be in a little art mark a little mark that's like a little piece of art I can't explain sometimes it just I like getting right in there and getting real close to this thing and and then then it's kind of fun because then you step back and you go oh like look at the effect it had hey Adolfo Adolfo from Queens not from the Bronx I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for good spots to put the different colors to make different patterns. And I'm, I'm just looking at how it kind of flows out from here. You can hear my dog crunching on a big bone. myself not to do the same brush strokes you gotta like add variation like why not put vertical lines in here why not I think it might add some flavor some flavor 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 Definitely want to tone these down down those reds a bit. Uh, 
Okay, your world, Klimt is your cowbell, dude. <laughs> cowbell. When I think of cowbell, I think of um, Will Ferrell with his cowbell. Oh, wait, cowbell. Oh, do you mean like, like a burden? I thought uh, cowbell is a bell around cows that was used was it used to scare off predators what was the purpose of the noise of the cowbell and what is your what is your point about how is it a cowbell i don't know what the fuck you're talking about <sighs> nah klimt's just something i'm into right now i i don't i don't i don't get stuck i don't get stuck on things I got no cowbells on me, man. I just go with the flow. Put your cowbells on me. What kind of crazy talk is that? Okay. Okay. Unexpected turn. Metro metronome? What are you talking about metronome? I don't know what I, I don't know what anybody's talking about. Everyone's just rabbling on about a bunch of nonsense. We got we got Aldovo talking about to find them, locate them. I don't know. Oh, the cowbells are used to 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 find missing cows. Okay. That makes more sense than steering away predators. Yes. Because there's a delay here. There's like about a 15 second delay, I think, around that. Between when you type something and when I can see it. So it's kind of... Okay. All right. What am I going to do? It's still on the suckalicious level. It's still kind of sucky. Still, still need some stuff. Hmm. Why don't I work on the, the bottom part? Look at the bottom part. Okay, let's just do some grays. Let's do some gray. I almost never do blacks and grays, but now I am. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Let's mix it all together. <clears throat> Do you know how deep a frog pond is on average? That's a good question. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> Enjoy watching paint, Josh, but it's bedtime here in Scotland. In Scotland! Okay, June. <laughs> That's so cool. There's someone from Scotland here. Right on. See you, June. And that little dofa, what the? What is he be 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 mean? <laughs> I think you just hit your keyboard by accident, buddy. <laughs> My favorite though is, do you know how deep a frog pond is on average? <laughs> That's a good question. That's like, what is the average airspeed of an African swallow? <laughs> uh, that is funny. See, this is why I do the internet shit for things, for things like that. What is the average? How deep is a frog pond? Knee deep. Knee deep. Wait, is that some sort of bad pun? I don't get it. Knee deep? Is that supposed to be the sound of a frog? Oh my god, that that that, that can't be it. It was like that's gotta be one of the worst jokes I may have ever heard. If that was meant to be a joke, Wesley, that was probably incredibly gifted at being terrible. I don't think I could tell a joke that badly. That's a unique skill you have. Knee deep, knee deep. Oh wait, is that what it is? Like knee deep. <laughs> That's really stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why I like it. Because it's so bad. That's one of those things that's so bad is good. I hope you realize that. It's so bad it's good. Okay. Okay. 
Hmm. Ooh, look at this gross muddy color. Let's put it in here. Ugh. Gross. That's actually, it was phenomenally gross. It's too gross, in fact. I need it to be less gross. So you say every time, enjoy. I don't even know what I'm talking about, Wesley. <laughs> well, did I just insult you? <laughs> I'm really good at that. I'm really good at randomly insulting people. I, I like to joke around, man. Come on, don't be sensitive. <sighs> okay. Do, 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 do. All right. That is a gross color. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck balls. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, how am I just okay? How do I cover the camera? Can't reach. There we go. And we're back. Wesley, did you go? Come on, man. Plunk. like that in the mid I like the blue in the mid section it's like a pause yeah pause 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 okay what am I gonna do now let's do some I think what if we did like A bit, bit more of a sense of a forest by putting some lines going like this. I think I got to darken these trees in the front too. They're just too too bright too damn bright busy listening to <coughs> T 
Tian Tzu. I don't know who Tian Tzu is. Is that music? Is that like <coughs> a, sp a speaker? Tian Tzu. I don't know. It's probably like a famous cellist. That's my guess. Tian How long did it take? Who knows? Really depends. Really depends. I, I could do, I did a really big one in like a half an hour once. And then I've been working on one for over a decade. <laughs> it really depends. Yeah, I did this really big one. I just sort of went crazy and just. It really varies. I'll, I'll, I have like about 20 or at least 20 big ones here that I've been working on for about two years probably. And I just need to put them away and come back to them and get it, I get into different moods. You know what I mean? But I've been doing these little ones just because I've been really enjoying the fact I can sit down. I can definitely paint for longer periods of time when I'm sitting down. And... Uh, I could do this live stream thing where a speaker talking about marketing. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know why DLive isn't working at all. There's usually a whole bunch of people in DLive that are fun to talk to, too. Oh, there it is. Now it's working. Maybe I just didn't... Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. So let's see. It's just such a weird composition even. It doesn't even make sense. Okay. Should I try doing a little bit of painting on of uh should I tackle the stupid thing now? Um Oh I gotta I don't have the picture of it. Where's that photo? of the red rocket I have it on my desk there it is all right it's gonna open it up there we go okay excuse me okay now I can see the red rocket here we are is it gray yeah it's a lot of gray I'll just start filling in the Start playing with some little bits of light and shading and stuff. And I think this thing, okay. Um, I wonder how I should do this. I could draw some in. Well, I definitely want to draw in. Okay, what can I do here? Should I add yellow and orange? Hmm. I'm definitely not what outlines. They'll look better. And the whole bottom. You are so particular in how you like to paint. Yeah? I guess so. Well, you'll be surprised, man. I am very also... Can be very free-flowing, too, man. Like, I can... 
people some people don't know like the things I've done. They would they would they always make assumptions like, oh, here's you know, why do you do it one way? I'm like, holy shit, man! I, this is like nothing. This is like I barely even touch this way of doing it. I constantly change, man. I do collages. I'll do weird abstract shit. You know, most people when they see that, then they then what they say is, well, you need to be more consistent. <laughs> funny it is funny the way things happen like that explosive <laughs> oh dofo you know my rule you can't tell me any suggestions because now i can't do it i'm just kidding i can still do it what about this blue this very Silly David Hockney aquamarine ice cream. Sounds like a caffeinated sugary drink. I need some ice cream or to gum. Sounds like a gum flavor. What if I just did lines like this? Okay. Uh, wait one sec. All right, we're good. No problem. So how am I going to do explosive? How am I going to do this thing? Hmm. Something, 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 something. I don't know. Okay, let's put this crazy lime green on. Lime. Yeah. It's going to make it brighter. Can't help it. Let's see if I put some dabs of this. What if I did? Oh, here's an idea. What if I did outlines with this lighter color? Have I ever done that? Pew, pew, crazy. Oh, getting. Let's do that. Let's do some. Outlines like this, Let's bring in these things. I don't even know why, why would you do that?
Okay, let's just... Should I try doing that? No. Green. Let's use the color green. <laughs> it's just green. That's just the name of it. Green. Green, 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 green. Why don't we do more vertical strokes here? As if there's something bringing your eye upwards. Of course, it's upside down. So you just have to pretend that these lines are going up. You just have to pretend. Oh, maybe I'm zoomed in too much. Boop. Boop. Maybe right about there. Okay. And the top, let's just do more horizontal for just little things and stuff. Things and stuff. Oh, Aldofo, I'm joking. I was joking. I was just teasing. Don't take what I say seriously, honestly. You can... I, I like to mess around a lot. I grew up like this. I grew up in a very, very, uh, very um, I don't know what kind of, what, how to describe it, but I grew up in a very teasing environment. That was the norm. You're constantly teased. So, uh, yeah, I was just teasing. I was not being serious. Go ahead, say whatever you want. I'm, I'm, you can, you can insult me. You could, anything you want. Don't worry. It's all good, buddy. It's all good. Okay. I don't get insulted. Like, I don't get offended at all. At all, at all, at all. You could say anything you want. It, it, see, because it, to me, it just, it would be so ridiculous to me to get offended by stuff. So it's, I, I, I constantly forget that some people don't have the same sense of humor, you know? Like, I just totally would never say something seriously to hurt someone's feelings. I wouldn't intentionally do that. But yeah, that happens to me. More often than I, I should, uh, yeah. Well, well, anyhow, blah blah blah. blah. Okay, what should I do about this streetcar now? What should I do about this streetcar? How could I even how could I even be offended by that? Like telling me what to do? Just like go for it. You can say whatever you like. It's so crazy, man. I wouldn't I wouldn't don't have to apologize for nothing. Don't apologize to me. <clears throat> See, that's kind of a bit of a fuck up right there. Too green. <sighs> what should I do? Um, I gotta make this, uh, clean this. <laughs> it's gonna get dirtier, I'm telling you. It's gonna get dirtier. Oh, I'm hating this painting. I'm like, like in a scale of like one to ten, which is pure hate. This is up there. This is getting bad. Because right now, it is definitely leading towards stupid. It's kind of stuporific. It's kind of so dumb. How do I make it not dumb? Okay. What can I do it with the bottom? Just don't 
know. I'm just trying to think of how do I turn down the suck. Turn down the suck. Hey, actually, this is the color of here, isn't it? There's like vertical lines this way. There's like this kind of stuff. There's things over here. There's these things. There's the totally incorrect proportions look how badly this is done what kind of masterful craptastic painting is this masterfully shitty shitterific like this thing is over there is supposed to be and this is all supposed to be dark and this is a color oh gosh i'm not gonna add the headlights god don't no i'm it's no headlights oh for crying out loud for crying out loud for crying out loud. That's my grandfather. For crying out loud. He used to always say that with his voice, with his deaf, deaf man voice. For crying out loud. <sighs> okay, let's add some stuff to the background. Okay, I just grabbed this orange pencil and what? What the f Oh my god. What is an orange line doing there? I don't know, but fuck it. It's happening. Okay, let's do it. Hell no. Watch out for this fucking thing. One headlight. I'll do a headlight if you send me three bitcoins. That's the only time I'll do requests. I'll do requests for bitcoins. Bitcoins. Please. I'm not going to do any goddamn headlights. Some of the kind of crazy talk is that. What kind of madness. What kind of madness, Juliet. Juliet? Juliet. I'm talking about headlights in this day and age <laughs> oops it's more of an oval isn't it it's kind of like that and then this thing this thing here it's gonna go and there's a bumper kind of like that and then See, the whole, I fucked up this whole thing, didn't I? This goes up here, and then this thing's supposed to come out further like that, and then come out here, and then this whole thing is like this, you dummy, you dumbass, and you got these little weird glowing light things, and then this thing's here, and then this is where the red thing's supposed to, the red thing's supposed to start. There's a red thing. Oh, now I'm going to add headlights. I'm going to add fucking four headlights. <laughs> it's just, I just babble on about a bunch of nonsense. Actually, honestly, when, when I do this, I hear my cousin's voice. He's got the most awesome laugh. <laughs> we were kids. We used to do all kinds of crazy stuff together. He's a sweetheart. He is really super awesome guy. My cousin Andy. We used to have mud fights together at the cottage. Throw mud at each other. <laughs> I'm gonna add more headlights and you can some wheels? This is a streetcar. There's no wheels on a streetcar. Or maybe there are. I don't know, but you can't tell because they're they're way down below. Can you not see the picture? Is there a picture up there? Yeah. See the picture? Or let's show you. Boop. You can't really see wheels. It's just sort of like darkness under there. It's not a very high res picture. <clears throat> it's kind of like over here. This thing is over here. This kind of. There's like stuff and things on this vehicle and then like, okay, if I'm going to do this properly, 
I'm gonna try. Ugh, I hate having to do things properly. I like doing things messily. Feels more natural. Feels more authentic when you just sort of slap things together, kind of. Like I'm not really tr doing a very good job of these things, these loopy things, whatever these loopy. Oh yeah, this is like the windows. They're these weird oval. They have these weird oval shapes on them, don't they? And they're also continued up here. Okay, they're going to be... Where should I do this line? Should I do this line here? Oh, my eyes are going. My eyes, they're going. Okay, this is this little radar dish. Boop, boop, boop. I know it's just a reflection mirror. I know what... I know. I know it's a reflection mirror of some kind. I'm just being a dork. I'm just being a dork in High Park. This is cool. I actually have been on this bus. This is the streetcar to High Park that went along Bloor. I'll bet you this is the streetcar that went along Bloor. 506. Someone should look it up. All right. Okay. So the door kind of like comes in here and kind of kind of comes down here does this thing and then there's like a black thing that goes across and there's going to be more of these weird semicircle things these weird windows that sort of just do this Beep. i'm just going to give the impression of these semicircles i'm not going to see i could get, i could go all detailed and add the proper shadowing and lighting and stuff and then amaze people with the reflections and the shininess or i could go fuck myself why you call it a bus when it's clearly you know did i call it a bus it's because i'm not that smart and when i'm talking i'm just babbling on i don't really know what the hell i'm saying you should honestly just ignore whatever gibberish is coming out of my face cavity here because it's just a bunch of silly nonsense silly nonsense see i just let myself go not necessarily in a good way when i'm doing this artsy fartsy stuff i just sort of just If you know what I mean, do you know what I mean? When I say, just let it go, let it go. Let your free, da, 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 da. let it go, let it go. Let you free your body, do, 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 do. You might as well add a dent now that all those trees and the headlights, well, I'm no, I never said I was gonna do headlights. I was just fucking around, I was just, talking shit soon as soon, as, soon as listen as soon as someone says hey why don't you do this i just can't help but say no because <laughs> i think it's funny it's dumb i have a like honestly the sense of humor of a 12 year old that's it just like it's that simple but what am i supposed to do i'm supposed to change to make people happy ha ah, fuck no fuck no Hell no. Oh, these windows. You're in the TTC with these goddamn windows, and they never really open properly. And they only open like a little piece, like this one little slab of window opens, and you're stuck on the streetcar. Oh, you tell me. Oh, look at Cheryl. Tell me to paint what you feel. Oh, of course. Where, geez, oh, my God. What kind, of, what kind of crazy talk are you talking there, Cheryl? I always paint what I feel. I'm not good with people telling me to, to do stuff. I don't know if you're noticed. I'm not good with people telling me anything, actually. I'm not good with advice. <laughs> I don't take advice pretty much ever. Because I know better. Don't you know that? 
I know better. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Bobanowski. That's a cool last name. Was your nickname Bub? Bobanowski. Hey, it's the Bubster. <laughs> What's up, Bubster? I never had a cool nickname. Some people try to call me the Duck Man. That never really caught. I was never Duck Man. It was never... Draw what you feel. It's like people giving me advice. Don't you know that I know what the fuck I'm doing? I have never, ever listened to anyone when it comes to art. Ever. Our teachers tried to teach me stuff, and I was like, I know more than you. <laughs> ever since I was young. What a cocky son of a bitch. I'm so cocky when it comes to art. No one can tell me anything. Honestly. You don't care who you are. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, man. I have to laugh. You have to laugh. You have to laugh at this. That is my ex's last name, so I won't comment. <laughs> Come on, Cheryl. Then get, get the fucking name out of here. Get, get back to the, your roots. Get back to the original Cheryl. I had one guy come on, come on here, and he what did he say something? It was just the most arrogant thing to say something like, you know, I can guide you through the painting, pro, you know, to improve your painting, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck, right, really? Oh man, you have no idea. You have no idea how how badly that would that would not work out. It's like really, you're some dude on the internet. Why would I listen to you when I don't listen to people of their masters in their life doing this kind of stuff you think i'm gonna listen to some dude they checked out his profile too and he's like some sort of like trippy hippie dude doing like really shitty like fucking i can't even describe it wasn't it was like crafts and i'm like come on man don't fucking they just you know what i i, I kind of embracing the jerk side of me a little bit i think it helps i think i'm gonna be a better artist when i'm not so nice Because I spent my lifetime trying not to be offended, offend anybody and stuff, and just quiet, don't say anything. Uh, okay. Um, what about? Let's see if I do a gray thing. Yeah, let's put some gray lines in here. Let's just put some lines. Oops. Free your body, let it move your soul. What song was that? That was a really dumb song. Okay. Okay. That's a light blue, so why don't we continue with this light blue pencil mark? Frames are looking good. Gray pencil. What kind of marks will you make for me today?
Okay. Um, now, TTC bus or subway. I mean, <laughs> TTC streetcar. Streetcar. Oh, Jesus, you're so fucking stupid sometimes. This thing comes down here. Maybe I wonder if I should make it thick line. Okay, I have to make it a blend in better. So that's that's got to be a priority, is to make this thing blend in. Because right now it doesn't blend in. And that's that's okay. I'll get there. I'll get I'll get to the point where this thing's blending in. Maybe I'll just leave leave the the, the marks kind of like rough. It's more of a fire engine red, like this color. It might be weird to add the headlights like glowing. Not like it's not weird enough already. looking really bad oh my god I'm embarrassed I'm embarrassed it's so stupid looking this this thing is all comes down here and uh, what was I thinking by doing this
Hmm. I wonder if I should, uh, how can I make this better? Because right now it is not good. On a scale of good and bad, it's definitely on the bad side. This thing is, should be lower, like there. Wait, oh yeah, it should be like this. I'm just going to give an impression of some windows. I'm not going to really try to make actual windows.
I just spend more time darkening this up. How about um, Perching Black Raven or Lurking Black Shadow Sort? But then again, I'm no artist. so weird that um, see I'm here's the problem with painting from photographs sometimes is that your uh, the light is complete like it's like from a um it's like street light it's like these lights are coming from some source that's totally unrelated to what I've done so it's, it's gonna look a little strange it's gonna look super artificial won't make much sense.
I don't know. I think it's still super goofy. It's still. Oh, see Juliet? Putting in your widow cults. Still, it's still super a super goofy painting. It still doesn't have life yet. I think what I got to do is make the red extreme red, like abstract red. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to put red in there. That's just like crazy. You know what I mean? It's kind of what I think I need to do. Kind of like this red. It curves down here, doesn't it? See, the hard thing for me is how do I take something that's inorganic, like this streetcar, and blend it in to make it look organic? Oops. That is... Trying to get across. Still got, still needs quite a bit of way to go. Still, still on the craptastical side. Where's the uh, time? Is it seven seventy? Oh, it's not so bad. I thought it was later than that. I had a color which would have been, excuse me, good. Let's just see how white behaves on top of here.
classic TTC in its natural habitat. That's exactly it. Tyson draws stuff. You got it, man. It's the TTC in the wild. See, this is when we need... What was that Australian guy? Fuck, I love that guy. Remember he got stung in his heart with a stingray and he died? He was that Aussie guy. I love the Aussies. Aussies are awesome. He always wore shorts. Steve, Steve something. Steve, uh... Anyhow, you just hear him narrating, Here we are, in the wilds of, of Toronto, Canada, and we see the TTC Street Red Rocket in its natural habitat. It's beautiful, crikey! <laughs> Steve Irwin? Is that what his name? I loved watching that guy. Steve Irwin, I'm pretty sure that was his name. Crikey! I've got an Australian relative and I don't think I've ever heard her say crikey, ever. <laughs> crikey! Okay, so what we gotta do with this is we gotta make it. Okay, I gotta bring in some. There's that. It was like yellows. It, something Naples. Naples yellow. Or be, was it beige? Yeah, let's just do beige. I think that could. No, that's a bit. The color is not quite. Well, it's pretty close to this. Let's just let's just put it on here, and I can always layer it. Because here's the thing with gouache is that it, it definitely dries different color than you apply it. Let me, I gotta fix up this whole area at the top. This whole area is foobard. And it kinda, how does this work here? I thank you. <laughs> That's that means that means someone followed me and wow means I got a lemon. <laughs> I got four lemons from Paragoon. <laughs> Thanks, Paragoon. Wow. Who can guess who that is? Wow. Let's go Raptors. <laughs> ah, that's funny. I don't know fuck all about sports, to be honest. I don't know anything about sports teams. You know, I was into martial arts. I was into skiing and martial arts. I was never good with sports teams. I could never follow it. My brain was too slow to figure out whose team was doing what and when and where. I like playing sports, but I could never watch it. I could never, never kept my interest at all. All I know is something's happening in Toronto with the Raptors because I was on Reddit earlier and there was like everyone was talking about like the front page was all about the Raptors and someone doing something. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Something happened with the Raptors. Wait, you from Toronto? You don't know the Raptors? No, I don't know anything. I'm from Toronto. I'm in the T dot right now. Lived here my whole life. And I literally don't watch sports. Don't watch any sports. I would watch MMA. That's fun. That's cool. I like seeing people beat the crap out of each other. But honestly, baseball, football, baseball bores the shit out of me. Four bounces in the ball. I know my brother was on Facebook and he said something about uh uh one of my brother's friends, who I'm also Facebook friends with, is like a raptor. Hey. Thank you. Hey, Dan Scott is a Raptors fanatic. And he goes to all the games. Like this guy, he has pictures every other day with like hanging out with the Raptors. And um, my brother posted on one of the things saying, what, um, something about four. Here's Rob. Like Rob, well, I shouldn't say his name. But like, look at this. Every, every, 
I better cover up his name. Every photo, he, it's all about, he's like hangs, he's like, he's literally at, like, like here he is hanging out. Like, is, is that, that's some raptor dude, right? I don't know who the hell this guy is. <laughs> he's like obsessed with the raptors. And he goes to all their games and he's, he like, I think he meets the players and shit. Like, I don't know. Like, like, is this, a, is that, a, is that a raptor? I don't know. <laughs> Who's that guy? Some tall dude. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah, so there's something about four bounces. My brother was said nice four squats or something. I don't know. You need to watch it. Trust me. Sup, Dan Scott. I like. I would. My, the problem with mean sports is I just couldn't remember anyone's names and things. And when everyone, like, everyone would be trading the hockey cards. And I could, like, I remember Daryl Sittler. That was it. Daryl Sittler, Bobby Hall. I remember Bobby Hall because my brother threw a Bobby Hall book at my head and cut me right in the eye once. That's how I knew who Bobby Hall is. It was a hardcover book. He was take, he was in the washroom in the basement. I was being an idiot little kid. He's seven years older, much bigger, and I was bugging him. And he's in the toilet, and he, and he threw he meant to throw the book at the door, but I opened the door and it poof, caught me right in the face, and I have a little scar right above my eye where it was bleeding. <laughs> so that's how I knew who Bobby Orr is, because I had a book tossed in my head. <laughs> I've got a, my funny story is my brother was an amazing football player. Like, he was drafted for the CFL and turned it down. And uh, what was the story? Oh, yeah. This is my funny punch story. My funny punch story is this. My brother is actually even a little bit bigger than me. He's taller. He's about 6'3 or something, and I'm 6'6'1". Six, six, I definitely outweigh him now. Like, I'm like 3-something. But when I was about 17, 18, I started getting pretty physically fit but he was like he was like an elite athlete but i started doing martial arts so we were pretty much getting close to be even as far as punches and we had a punch game so he had a punch game where i would we'd eat like i have to show demonstrate this this is a true story this is very funny so i would i would hold my arm like this and he'd punch me and i'd go like falling against the car and then i'd i'd punch him and you know he would go and anyhow, you can only take about three punches and their arms were destroyed because we were hardcore. Like we would pound in. Anyhow, we were walking back from the neighbor's house and I remember very specifically this is happening. This is kind of funny. I said specifically, Miles, hold on. And what and and then I then I then I looked away and um I turned back. Just as I turned back, I saw the fist and then I was out cold. Because what happens when you turn your shoulder, your chin goes, and he hit me right in the chin, knocked me flat out, and was carried me over to my parents' house uh, from the neighbors. <laughs> and said, my mom was there. He's like, "What would you do to Josh?" So I knocked him out. <laughs> so my brother knocked me out. Gotcha. That was funny. We, I think we stopped playing the punch game after that because it got to be too crazy. Like we were just both too strong. <laughs> Hi, first time here. Have you met? No, I've never met Don Cherry. Thanks. I have not met Don Cherry. I don't think so. I wouldn't, yeah, not unless he's at some sort of weird party that I was at. You know, it's actually possible. Back back in the 2000s, I really was did not, I don't like parties, but I'd still get invited to them. I had a girlfriend who was into the Toronto Film Festival, so we'd go to all these fucking parties and like, you know, movie stars, blah, 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 blah. and so... Um, I kind of get roped along to go to these things and Don Cherry would be like exactly the kind of person that would go to that shit. So there's possible, like I'm just trying to think back in my memory of any of those parties. Can't remember. I don't know, but he's, he's a character, isn't he? Is he still on TV? That's this is how little I know about sports and tv i don't even know if don cherry is on still doing that stuff well i don't watch tv either i've seen two drunks play the punch game i passed out wait let me just let me just go to i gotta read it says um 
I seen two drunk friends play the punch game. I passed on it. Yes. Nugget wants to. I know, I know. She, I, I felt her on my leg. Oops. I got to switch back. There you go. In his 80s, still going strong. Yeah. Does he still have that dog? That, like a, a terrier, bull terrier or something? The top of this thing looks stupid, doesn't it? It doesn't feel right. It's coming, bulging out too much. Um, okay, do I want to try to make it look like the photograph or not? Because I'm starting to work towards realism and... I don't know. Do you find our supplies... Exp oh, hell yeah. Um, well, it's part of the, the life, man. If, if you want to... I mean, I do... I normally do very large paintings and... And I use oil paint, so it can get expensive. But recently, I've been doing using watercolor paper, and holy shit, is expensive. <laughs> yeah, like I was actually I was talking about um, watercolor paper earlier on about the kind of brands I buy and stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, some of the paper I, I buy is like f five six dollars a, a piece of paper. Each sheet is like five six bucks. And that's not even that, that's not even that outrageous. That's sort of like the norm. But, you know, it's, it's like, I don't, I don't, you know, it's a necessary expense. If you're going to be an artist, you have to pay for art supplies. But yeah, I mean, yep, it is not, can, it can be pretty damn expensive. No doubt. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, me too. I was so happy when digital cameras came out. Why? Oh, wait. I missed a bunch of stuff. No, but I think he had a bunch of them. A bunch of dogs. Interesting, Josh. Where is the train headed? It's headed to nowhere. It's headed nowhere fast. I don't know. Mark. Oh, Mark from, from Montreal, right? You got your, your mini gallery. Or maybe it's not Montreal, but I know you're in Quebec. And you've got the mini gallery. I don't know if you know, but this is this is called the Red Rocket. This is a the TTC Toronto. You don't really have the same kind of bus system as we do in Toronto, Montreal. Okay, where am I looking? Oh, I don't know. Can where's the photograph? Here it is. Okay. I think I'm going to make this much smaller. And this whole thing has got to be black. It's dark, like the night. Yeah, I try. I've always tried to watch sports, but my just my brain just wanders and I get bored out of my my face. I It's weird. I like fighting sports. Like, I will watch boxing. For sure, I'll watch MMA. I was into the MMA. I'll tell you. Before UFC was a thing, I was watching it because I was into martial arts when I was younger and I had to stop because of too many injuries. But I was definitely watching before it became this big popular thing, man. I would anytime anything like came on, like um, like some of the guys we were watching back then, uh, God, Shamrock, like that, that, that's how old school it is. I was into it back when Shamrock was a champion and people were, and, and when Hoist Gracie came on. Holy mackerel, that blew my mind. Like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu first came on the scene. I was there watching this stuff happen, watching Gracie like take down that 600 pound dude. We were like, no way. Like Hoist Gracie, Gracie was like, is my size or I'm a lot heavier, but same height and stuff. And this guy was like 600 pounds and took him down with ease. 
And back then, oh my God, you were allowed to do any kind of strikes. You were allowed to elbow people in the nose and in the nuts and used to punch them. Yeah, pride fighting. Like, I remember there was one guy, this this guy from Ontario. There was a fighter from Ontario who was repeatedly punching this dude in the nuts. I think he was an, a Japanese guy, like a really thick, almost maybe even a sumo. But do you remember that guy from, from Ontario? He was from Southern Ontario. Because that's where I'm from, so I'm kind of like, yeah, like Hamilton, something like that. And he was pounding the guy right in the balls. And this is live. T- it was not live TV. This is like, oh, my God. That changed everything, Gracie. When the, when, those, when they came out with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and it was all about, like, it was pride. I think part was, was one of the big ones. And, uh, yeah, I was in love with that stuff. That's all I would watch. And I just could never get into, like, team sports. Like, all my family is huge into, like, football, watching football games, tennis. Like, they, they're into the Olympics. Actually, my brother-in-law was in the Olympics. My big family is big into sports, actually. My brother was, like I said, he was, he was, he was um, recruited to go to CFL, which he turned down. My, my dad is, like, an incredible tennis player. My sister was, like... Uh, was actually the captain of the Jack Dragon Boat racing team for Canada. Fucking, and they, she went to Hong Kong and they won. My brother-in-law was an Olympic fucking snowboard. No, uh, what are they called? The sled, when they jump on the fucking rocket thing, go. <laughs> and then there was me. <laughs> yeah, like we have like this weird super athlete gen- genetics in my family. Everyone's like a, was super over the top athletic and I was really good too at a bunch of stuff. I was really exceptional at uh, like uh, at, at solo sports. Like I was really good at tennis and I was really good at skiing and martial arts was my thing, man. I, I was working on every day, six days a week, more like, yeah, through university. That's all. That was my main thing. Six days a week. And I used to go to Concordia. Well, I went to McGill but I would go train at Concordia and McGill. And this is cool. If you're into martial arts, one time Dan and Santo came. Dan and Santo was the guy who taught Bruce Lee the Filipino martial arts. Because we did a lot of Cali and Screamo, which is like stick fighting. And and uh, and so when I went there, his wife came with him. And this is this is probably around 90, 91, maybe, 92. And she she actually taught me some some Wing Chun Kung Fu and Puxa Lapso and stuff. And she was actually really good. She flipped the shit out of me. I did some martial arts with some really top people in my life. One of my favorite stories. Oh my God, I totally forgot about this guy. Okay, I'm just gonna tell my really one of my favorite stories. Okay, so this is one of my favorite stories. I lived in Japan for a year. And uh by that time, I had done martial arts for just a couple of years, three or four years, and I always wanted to learn Aikido. So I was asking around, um, if, you know, and it turns out uh, a guy I knew was a high-level black belt in Aikido. And when you're in a high level, you wear these black dresses, basically a black skirt, okay? And so they actually invited me. I was, it was weird. I was, uh, sometimes. Uh, thank you. Oh, hey. So I'm going to tell my quick Aikido story. Yeah, that's cool, man. I, I've never been to a real UFC fight. Okay, let me just finish the story. This is really fucking... i got to get it out. So I showed up, and it was this tiny little place above a garage. In Japan, the things are very different in that size doesn't matter like you could be in a tiny house and it could be some multi-millionaire's place like it's weird anyhow i walked in there and i I think i had my taekwondo gi or something you know but anyhow i walked in there and everyone was wearing a black skirt and i was like oh fuck because i i was like completely didn't know anything about aikido anyhow this little old japanese dude who is like the grand sensei comes out and he and he he had like a staff or a pole or something and um i i everyone had to kneel and i could barely kneel because i was a big guy and also i had a, a bad injury in my knee so i was struggling honestly just to sit there and kneel and it was all in japanese and um one guy kind of took me under his wing this very cool dude and anyhow it turns out it was like one of the top ranking aikido schools in the world 
And I found this out after I came back from Japan. Not only was one of the top Aikido places in the world, he was also like one of the top ranking karate guys in the world, this little old man. And he loved me right away. Here was this giant redheaded dude. Because I was showing my taik- the taiko no kicks and stuff. And they were neat. So, and he would flip people around. And I learned some, some like, I know how to just, how to hold because of that experience, I know exactly how to get the nerve and like take someone down, just gentle touches from that experience. But I spent about six months there and honestly, all they taught, all I had to do, I kept on doing this one fucking move over and over. And, and, um, anyhow, I learned about how, how top ranking this guy was, the old dude, because I came back to Toronto and I thought, okay, I want to try to do Aikido. Let me see if I can continue with it. And I went to this place on Young and Wesley, Wellesley, I think. Young and Gerard, I can't remember, in the northeast corner. It's kind of well in a Taekwondo place. And I went up there and I talked to the, the master and he, he says, he was his master. And he told me like, holy fuck, that, that was that guy who liked it was one of like the ultimate Aikido guys in the world. And I, I, I've got pictures of me and him and stuff. Wow. So, but, the, but the, wow. the, the problem I had with that thing was, is that um, everyone was so beyond like, like they were all black skirt black and and half the time they would sit and they'd talk in japanese and i'd be honestly sweating bullets just trying to like from the pain in my knees from kneeling when everyone is like like rigid still in there standing still and me and the other guy were the only two like non-japanese people there so it wasn't the best experience because it was i didn't know what the hell i was saying but there was one Japanese dude who spoke some English who who taught me these things, these like literal little th- like I can it, I practiced some of these moves hundreds of times with some of the best people in the fucking world. Ah, oh, I wish I could still do that. I gotta remember his name, little old Japanese dude. Uh, thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> cool man. Hello, Crypto World X Speed Racer Four. Stream slaves, thank you. Oh, I gotta go. Oh shit! Um, here we go. I have to. Yeah. So I, I learned, and it was only the the dead and Santo thing it was only a weekend. It took place in in Montreal Concordia University, but like for me, meeting Dan and Santo was like, oh man, it was like um like uh, I don't know. Like I I'm not a like I don't care about. F- famous movies and stars but for some reason meeting dan and santa well, for me that was like that was cool like i, I was so excited and, and like you know he was i back then we were doing a lot of um wing chun kung fu and you do these like these particular hand drills and with your eyes closed and shit hey cheryl and he was holding the bag for me when i was doing these punches man oh uh, thank you hey Mel Habanis, you're at the top of D Live, bro. Well, that's cool. I don't know what the fuck that means, really. Overall, <laughs> like, is that good? D Live. What else did I do with martial arts? Oh, yeah, when in Toronto, when I was working at martial arts, my um, oh yeah, I've got some other cool stories that I did. Igor, who's still who's who's doing? He lives in I think California now. And he's like uh, top ranked judo and Brazilian jiu jitsu. And uh, um, when we had M- Master Michael Hui, that was his name. And he took a couple of us and we went to go train in like High Park. And it was just Igor, Master Hui. Hi. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, it was totally like meeting your sports hero. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just thinking about the other cool stuff I've done in martial arts. And I really never talked about this before. So Igor, and uh, it was this big Russian guy, a friend of mine. We worked together. And he had met this guy who was a general in the Chinese Red Army or something. And he moved to Canada. And then he became, I can't remember what he was, but he would take a few people out and train us. And so he, tra- he taught us some, some stuff. Holy! F- I can still remember the moves, man. I can still. So here, like, so there was a couple of moves he taught us that. So if someone like grabs you in the lapel, like you, you immediately you you you. Um, this is a strike to like to the throat or the solar plexus. This grabs that hand, so you punch, 
and then this comes down and you turn the hand so it's at nine degrees and you they, they they fall fucking flat and we used to practice this like we used to practice hundreds of times man and we looked like a bunch of weirdos in the park <laughs> and i i can't remember so it was cool so and he he he, he said uh, and like we were curious about how good we are, and he says, "You are now both second degree black belts in whatever the fuck martial art it was. I can't even remember what it was. <laughs> it was like, cool, like that. That's it. There was no, there was no ceremony. There was no belts. There was nothing. It was like you are now second degree. <laughs> that was fun, man. That was straight out. It was like kind of like Karate Kid. But for all that training and stuff, like as soon as you get in and start fighting for real, it's very different. Like I don't know if I'm a real fighter in real life because I definitely loved sparring in Taekwondo. That was fun as hell. But real fighting, like I think that the only you have to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I did try uh, maybe like five or six years ago, but I'm an old fart and uh, I, my knee couldn't take it. But if I was to do anything now, it would be Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. That's just like, you go right to the ground. Okay, I went to stream and you got me totally interested. Damn it, man. <laughs> Beautiful. This place, this piece reminds me of the the wounded deer for some reason. Oh, I have to look at that one. He asked me too. It's fun to see Pimpress and the host stories. Hey, let's take a look at this wind, wounded deer for a second. I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'm gonna move the picture side. I'm gonna go here. Let's let's take a look at the wounded deer. Painting? I'm guessing. Oh, free by Frida. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, just one sec. I got. I'm just covering the camera for a sec because my kid's going. Going. Okay, we're all, go for it. Okay. Oh, you gotta go, but come back down. Okay. All right. Wounded deer. This <laughs> fucking Frida. She's kind of funny. She's got that crazy big eyebrow. She's got the unibrow, and she like she like was totally into showing off her unibrow. This 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 Frida. Look at that unibrow line, girl. All right. <laughs> I did not. I, I don't remember that painting. Like, I'm pretty well versed in art, but I didn't know that. Cool. Okay, let's go back to painting. Here's my picture. Let me go back up to you. Boop. All right. Okay. Yo, what up? XX Rex. You know what's funny is... Uh, um, Rex... What was that? Uh, what was that movie? Napoleon Dynamite. Remember Rex Quando? <laughs> that was good. Step back, break the neck. Step back, break the neck, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> break the arm. Step back, break the arm. <laughs> Rex Quando. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna tell you about. So I, I did train. At one place in Toronto, and it was the uh, which is cool because it was where the Canadian Olympic uh, team trained. And um, I was never that good at Taekwondo, to be honest. Like I was okay. I had a really good spinning left hook kick. That was probably my one good thing. And I used to be super flexible, man. I used to be able to do the fucking splits. Now I'm just a middle-aged fat fucker. Middle-aged fat fucker. <clears throat> oh, I gotta fix this whole thing up. That's just craptastic right there. And I think this line has to come here. No, no, I don't fight. No, I'm like I'm like a docile, domesticated, middle-aged. Yeah. Yeah, my, my my philosophy is now is just oh, just relax. Just don't worry about it. 
<laughs> that's what I was saying earlier. Like I don't, I don't have the testosterone like I did when I was younger, where I was like, I was jazzed up to spar. I used to, I used to love going and putting on the gear. And actually, you know what? The best thing was I loved fighting people that were much better than me. And I'll tell you what. Here's the thing I learned: when you when you get your first degree on a black belt, at least in Taekwondo, they were the most dangerous because. They were they had enough technique to hurt you, but they didn't have enough control. So the people I loved sparring and learning from were the people that were like third degree, fourth degree, who they could they they were in such good control that you would never really get hurt. But it was always the jackass like first degree black belts who were just almost like they had to prove something. You know what I mean? They had to rush rush out to try to like I don't know. Maybe it was just the places I went to. But if I was to do it all over again, I would be all about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, man. I'd be rolling around, choking people out. <laughs> like I know, I know some of the basic stuff, but um, <laughs> I went to one place, and I didn't tell them about my experience because I, you know, I had quite a bit of experience, and I just started getting this attitude from this guy who was like, "Okay, wow. like I can't remember what it was." He started like. Just, it was it was a little obnoxious. I didn't want to deal with that shit. I'd passed that years and years before. There's actually a fun video you can watch of this guy who is like a really top-ranked Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy. Oh, thanks, uh, Profits TV. Thank you. I don't know, what is a white chat mark? Is that something like, is that like one of those fucking um, blue verified things for Twitter? It means you're a hotshot. Are you a hotshot there? Profits TV. Um, all right, so there's this guy who is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu like instructor, but he came, pretended to be a white belt, and he went to his friend's school, and, and, and he said he was a white belt, didn't know anything, and he started rolling around with them and like was totally demolishing everybody. Oh, right on, cool. I was just teasing, by the way. I, I honestly... I, I, didn't, I don't mean to insult people. I just have a thing where I just, I, I like to insult because it's funny. But yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm like in the MMA too. I love watching it. Although, to be honest, I haven't been watching for a while. Oh, okay. Here, if you ever watched, um, if there's was ever an alien living on earth it was bj what's what's bj's last name the little dude from hawaii he looks like a buddha does anyone remember him i swear to god um thank you someone's got to remember bj's last name and anyhow bj pen thank you he it was freakish watching him because like if you ever tried fighting like I don't know, but like you have, like, I, I was always kind of stunned and confused a little bit. It seems like he m moved at a different speed. Like he was like in a different. I, thank you. Hey, Renegade H H eight grenade. Oh, you hate grenades. Um, he moved at a different kind of like speed, man. And also, he just got wrecked and said, "Well, oh, man, yeah, he should have retired." Like, oh, fuck, he's probably my age. I, thank you. But do you ever, like, he would show up and he would be like, space age goddess. Is that PewDiePie? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't know fuck all about PewDiePie. And uh, I actually watched him for the first time about a week or so ago. <laughs> I was like, PewDiePie, what, what is an old fucker like me going to look at PewDiePie? Anyhow, but ever watch B.A. Japan? He was so fast and he was so, when you come out, like, everyone's listening to, like, ACDC for their song coming out. And he's, like, listening to, like, some cool chilled out Hawaiian music. It just sort of shows up and, um, you know, he was amazing to watch. And Anderson Silva was also someone who just doesn't seem human where he could just move. You're 47. Oh no, I'm 49. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Anderson Sullivan, sometimes, like, you just wonder how the hell does a guy move at that speed? And then when I saw him got knocked out by, by some, a younger guy, I was like, oh, I didn't want to see that because he was such a, such a, like, spookily incredible athlete. 
that guy. And so I haven't been following them much. Randy Couture. Oh yeah, yeah, I loved Randy Couture. Yeah, he was he was awesome, and he was like fun to listen to, and he seemed like a level-headed, decent guy. You know what I mean? Randy Couture, and it was also okay. It was Randy Couture. Who's the other guy he was with? There was always Randy Couture and the other guy. Um, they're very very similar. Both very square-headed guys. One has a um, one's a bit more aggressive. Randy Couture was a nice guy. <laughs> you don't feel creepy anymore. Well, I'm actually I'm I'm live streaming to like Facebook and YouTube and DLive. So I got the whole range of people. Most people who follow me on, on Facebook are like they're my age. They're like 50, 60. So they don't know what the hell I'm talking about half the time when I'm talking to my, on DLive. <laughs> Someone what was it? Was it Juliet? You were there? I, I was uh Yes, Juliet. So Juliet is this. This is for D Live people. You, you'll probably get this. Juliet. I was joking about her last name, which is Jenkins, and I was like Leroy Jenkins, because I've made video games for twenty five years. So I'm heavily into video games, and I, I was trying to explain to her, like this is like a like a, a thing in video games. It was like a, a funny moment, and uh, she's like, I don't give a sh I don't give a shit. Like you only you're wasting your time. You know, only six-year-olds play video games. And I was like, what? No, the average video game player is 35 years old, blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And I was, I was just on my little tirade about video games. I'm really, I'm not doing very much here. Oh, nice. I really need to figure this out. I'd love to follow you on Facebook and Twitter. I mean, YouTube. Yeah, well, I don't have that many people on, on Facebook. I mean, sorry, on YouTube. I think I have maybe 17 subscribers, but so I, I don't have like a, like you have to have like a thousand people before they give you an actual tag or whatever. But I put, if you go to my website, drugman.com, there's a link to, to the YouTube thing. Link to YouTube thing. That's my technical term. I'm really stalling here, aren't I? I'm not really do, being, okay. So what does it mean to be at the top? Okay, all six some, six of your kids? You got six kids? I love the nice break from video games. I love games, but get so sometimes. Oh, thank you. Six kids, holy crap, man. That's that's a lot of kids you popped out there. I remember there's a, you know, family friends had 11 kids. Well, kind of, there were, my grandparents had a cottage Northern Ontario, and there was a family that had 11 kids, the McMurtrys. Six kids, that's impressive for someone in my generation. I don't know anyone that has that many. Maybe you're like a Mormon or Roman Catholic, or I forget which ones that doesn't use birth control. <laughs> or maybe you're Orthodox Jewish, that could be the other one too. Who else has? All, all these... Thank you. I got my money's worth out of my reproductive system. <laughs> That's funny. Deg, what is OWO? I don't know what the hell's going on with you, with you young sons of bitches. You're... What is... <laughs> we use birth control. I don't want to... Don't tell us this stuff. <laughs> Captain Lukey Pukur. <laughs> I loved John Luke. Thank you, Deg. <laughs> Wow, well, well, we was very. I gotta give me, gotta me a diamond. I'm gonna go buy a Tesla. Get me some. Give me, get me some electric car. All right, what the hell am I doing here? <sighs> Don't call me a son of a bitch, son of a bitch. <laughs> What is what is uh, I know that's cool. What is O W O? No, you don't have to apologize, man. You can you could not insult me. No religion, it's a cult. I'm a spirit filled believer in Jesus Christ. That doesn't make any sense. I know you're just fucking with me. What kind of car is that? O W O is furry. Oh my god, you're furry. What kind of animal are you? <laughs> I'm gonna make 
do you believe in O? I don't even know what O is. How can I believe in it? It was U W U. I don't know what this is. Do you realize I'm an old fart? I don't know what the hell's going on. Okay, we're well. I hope you're human because you're typing and you're not a bot. Okay, let's look up what this guy's talking about or person. I don't know if you're male or female. Okay, let's look up O W O. O W O. Google says is a meme emoticon, popular in role playing and furries. It is also well known from popular copy pastas where the writers use baby language to say some rather inappropriate yummy, stuff. Yummy, yummy, I, got yummy, my tummy. Yummy. I still don't. I still don't know this meme. Okay, let's let's watch this video. All right, let's learn some. Let's get educated. I don't know what the fuck is. Wait, I don't want to read anything. Just show me. Uh, you're not. You're not helping me, internet. You don't help me at all. Um, okay, Urban Dictionary. That's good. Okay. Is an emoticon used in chat rooms similar to... Oh, it's just a face. But the W is supposed to make it cute. Oh, okay. I got it. All right. See, I'm not so spaced out after all. It's just an emoticon. Man, am I ever dumb. Okay. <laughs> Poor... I ain't no fur, you poor soul. If you keep searching, you will regret it. Yeah, probably. I'll, I'll get booted off eventually. Furries. That is definitely something different. Furries. There are all kinds of subcultures out there. I can tell you what, though, like, I'm definitely, most people my age don't have a damn clue what the hell's going on when it comes, like, I live in the on the internet, basically. So, I kind of have an idea, but even then. Okay, how are you liking DLive? It's not bad, actually. Uh, okay, I've never heard of, oh, oh, it's a face, hey, we both learned something. Yeah, exactly. Um, old art guy. Good, I mean, like, I, it's kind of weird, because, like, I'm just sitting here. And I read some people writing stuff. You're a long, <laughs> young art lass. Nice. Um, I think it's fine. It's cool. I mean, it, it it's actually spooked me out a couple times because um, I was talking to someone. It turns out they were 13. And that kind of spooked me out because uh, I didn't expect that at all. I'm so used to talking to people that are, you know, full-grown adults. And this person was... Fat. <laughs> I'm staff here just making sure everything's okay. Oh, thanks. That's crazy. Fat headed noob, you're staff? Right on, man. Everything's good. So, everyone, watch your language or fat headed noob is going to bust you. 30, yeah. So, and it turned it like immediately. I was like, I don't even know if I should like continue talking. And I thought, because it never could, it never occurred to me to think, um, that would be like talking to a minor. Uh, where were you when I was streaming? F f oh, <laughs> yeah, that's. Hey, thank you. What's my icon? My name is. Oh, he's got a little icon. Looks like a ninja star or something. Uh, hopefully, it's a, yeah. Well, fathead noob donated diamond, guys. Right on. Um, yeah, no, but actually, it was kind of a. It was an interesting moment for me because um, he was talking about having panic attacks. And I've had panic attacks before. So I was talking a little bit about anxiety and the things, how you can overcome it and whatever. And then he said that he, he was 13. And he said, my ex-girlfriend. I was like thinking, I didn't have a girlfriend when I was 13. You've got an ex-girlfriend. And he said his ex-girlfriend is, is stalking and wants to kill him and wants to stab him. Hi. And I was like, wow, listen, you need to not talk to people on the internet. You need to go, please go talk to the police, whatever. But like, and, and it kind of like spooked me out. So um, overall, though, I mean, D-Live seems cool. I mean, I like the fact it's so, I think, uh, not as, it's not as saturated, I guess. But uh, yeah. So just be careful, folks, because you never know. Like I've, I've had to rethink my things a, a couple of times because when I'm doing art, I, I tend to sort of ramble on and, and uh, just sort of enjoy the moment. But 
yeah. So that was that was an interesting experience. And the best part, his name was like XX Mega Death XXX or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that picture. My mom was in love with Robert Redford. <laughs> Not literally. She always liked him. She always teased my dad. What are you going to open your chest? When are you? What do you mean? Oh, do I open this thing? Hold on a second. Okay, let me let me show you my desktop. Are you talking about this thing? I thought this doesn't do anything. Oh, wait, wait. The more you engage in live stream, the more I have too many words. Forget Hi. it. Thank you. Yeah, too many words. I don't know about opening no chest. Uh, gonna go smoke a blunt with my grown son. Wow, look at you getting all getting all high on the Mary Joanna with your grown son. One of the six. Thanks. Hello, Aaron. Yeah, when you open the chest. Oh, how do I do that? So I can. When, yeah, when you open the chest, you give out Leno points. Okay, so I can give Leno points to you guys. Just so how do I do it? Someone's gotta. Someone's gotta walk me through it. Because when I click this, it says the more you engage, the more chest points. The more you get. When you open, download the app to claim the chest. Uh, What does this thing do? Oh, what? What if I click that? You cannot donate to yourself. Okay. All right. Well, I'll have to read about it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You're clicking as a viewer. You have to be clicking on the streamer's view. Where is this? Okay. How do I find where are the streamers? I th okay. I think. I've Oh hey, if if the if the D Live dude is there, hey fat headed noob, here's something that I think for your UI you need to fix. The this little icon interfere like um, covers up the chat. It's really annoying because the chat starts at the bottom, and you can't. It's always if a thing's more than like you know one line long, it's gonna get cut off. So I'd move that little freaky little chest thing out of the way if you can. The only way is if you have to, you know, expand your view to this. Okay, so how do I give you guys, um, how do I give you guys the chest thing? Like, I don't even know where the fuck. So I, I don't know where to, how do I give chests? Click on, distribute wards. Okay, so let's distribute the wards. Hi. Did Hi. It? Thank you. All right. Hi. Thank you. There, is that, is that right? That, oh fuck! What's happening? You. Chess rewards will distribute I in twenty you. seconds. Why? What's? I thank you. Okay, something's happening. I thank you. <laughs> so are you guys getting thank you. Lino digits? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Luckiest followers. Do I have to do anything, or is that it? Is that it done? Do I just you've Sent to okay, woo woo woo. Oh, it gives everyone thirty seconds to follow. Oh, they've gamified it. So you sons of bitches are all gonna be addicted now, trying to get the Lino points. You sons, you suckers. Okay, so this thing builds up, I guess, over time or something. All right, bro, I got here literally as you were doing it. Sorry, man. You snooze, you lose. You got to be on top of the shit. <laughs> wow <laughs> people look for streamers with big boxes and you can either let the box build up over time which is free so th the more you talk the higher the chance well jesus christ i'm yapping all the time here or you can buy points from d live i'm giving back the link you gave no nah, man keep it man enjoy it <laughs> so, okay so so how does it build up uh i don't know okay well anyhow okay well, that's cool. That's fun. I'm not really doing much. I'm progressing on this thing. What time is it? Eight o'clock. Wonder something funny. I'm a college professor. 
engagement. When you're viewing, not streaming, you can talk and interact with the DLive streamer to get better rewards from their box. Wait a second. Um, when you are viewing, not streaming, you can talk and interact. Oh, you mean chat, not actual talk talk. Um, with the DLive streamer to get better rewards from their box. The more viewers talk, it goes up. I just sent me a lemon. Thanks. A lot of people are in Slick Rick stream trying to get a lot of limo. Slick Rick. I don't think I want to go to Slick. Anyone named Slick Rick? That's ah, a little iffy, man. Because, like, what if Slick Rick slips out his dick? <laughs> Slick Rick, man. I don't know. Is he, like, a famous D-Live personality? Yeah, don't don't hang out with me. Go go to Slick Rick's. He's got he's got all the moolah. He's got all the He's got all the the gear that you need. He plays the the battle royale game better known as yeah, see, you're talking to, you're talking to like the video game master, my friend. You don't know. I was playing PUBG when you were on Fortnite. God damn it. I'm willing to bet I've played. He's a streamer, but his box is over 10,000 Lino in his box. Hey, what's your next art project? I don't know. Um, I've got a whole ton of big. I can move the camera, but I've got like a whole studio here. Tons of big paintings. Um, yeah. So 10,000, Rick has 10,000 in his box. So how does he, I guess he has lots of people follow him. Thank you. Hey, Le, <laughs> see, I get that. Le, it's hard to even say it, actually, because you want to say LeBron James. LeJohn Brames. That's hard to actually say. Say that three times fast. Say blow big black bubbles five times fast. He either bought them or put them in the box or he streamed a lot and built it up over time. Do I have any tips for you know, selling, you know, selling art? Hmm. Depends what you mean by selling. Like if you're talking about making a living... <clears throat> not easy like I gave it a try when I was about 25 I spent a year full-time painting after saving up I'd like uh, and it was still very very difficult and uh, I mean yes I have some tips uh, you got to find out who well it also depends on like how much you think you want to sell like what would you want to sell it for like there's all kinds of markets I mean Depends on ser how serious you want to get. Commissions? Commissions? I've done quite a few commissions, but they've all been like through word of mouth. People have known me who've seen my stuff. That's how it's all happened. Um, obviously, you need a website so people can see. You can make some money with commissions, but if you want people to ask you for commissions, you need to develop a style and uniqueness that... Yeah, I mean, th that's, that's very true. You need to sort of develop a... I I would say don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm mean, like you know, it's just uh, you know, I would say. I mean, I've got so many ideas popping through my head. I'm just trying to think of like what the most appropriate one is. Um, there are many avenues, of course, online. It's actually the hardest thing is really going to be marketing more, getting people to see your stuff more than anything else. So, like, I'm I've started doing shows. So I've got a show in two weeks. I'm going to be doing. Um, I've got a website. Um, I'm like, I've got, I started using Facebook and there's about 12, 12,000 people follow me on Facebook now just by, by posting stuff and then getting, getting involved. Um, so it kind of, and like some, I'm just about to start selling on Facebook. Um, I, I am, I'm currently building a Shopify store, um, which allows me to have like, uh, to sell on multiple platforms. It's just, it's like an e-commerce web platform. 
but uh, nothing. I think I've sold pretty much everything, you know, face to face. So, yeah, I've sold lots of paintings just by people coming over and checking my work or having a physical show is the best by far. And it all depends on who's who you want to, who you're trying to sell to. Like I typically sell to people who have got lots of money because you know I, I don't you know I I can be kind of expensive. So it really depends on what you're thinking about. Like I've heard people have careers doing furry art. <laughs> so if you could do that, it'd be great to see your art supplies. Do you have a schedule for filming or is this a hobby? No, it's more like what I do, but I don't, I don't really have a schedule. Like I, I just sort of go and, um, uh, yeah, it'd be great to see your art supplies. I got tons of art supplies here. I don't know if you can see behind me. Um, here, I, I, you know what I can do? I'll do this. I'll show you some of my stuff. Let me switch to this camera. And I'll show you some things. Okay. So, over here, these... I wonder if I can lift this thing up. Okay. So, these are, these are some oil paints here. And over there... Those are all oil paints, and those are some brushes down there. Oh, I, can, I don't know if you can see my hand brushes. And then these are quite a few large canvases. So there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, eight over here. Oh, wait, shit, eight over here. And there's about, wait, this camera's on. There's about 15 back there. I can't, I gotta, they're all quite large. These are sideways. So these ones here are four feet by seven feet. This one is four feet, uh, sorry, four feet high by about seven feet across. And there's even one that's eight feet back there. And there's about 10 canvases. So that's normally what I work at. And over here, uh, I have a bunch of gouaches. So a little bit of paintbrushes, some pencils, water. Yeah. So there you go. That's my little space here. And I have lots more supply. Oh, I've got a room upstairs. There's just fucking tons of paintings and stuff. I like a quick, okay. Focus what you like. You know, Shadows Assassin. Everyone has their niche. Furry is just one of them. <laughs> I like acrylic and digital. What is the patience for it? Yeah. And this is my thing though. Like if I had, I've only had like two real passions in life. One was video games, making video games and art. So I did video games for 25 years, made lots of games. I built a few game studios and that was one of my dreams. And so it's sort of like, wow, I did it. I fucking climbed that mountain and uh, I still make video games. I still do. I still do a lot of work in games. I do a lot of work on helping game companies like get funded to make video games and that kind of stuff. I do a lot of judging mm -hmm. and consulting stuff, but and uh, but I'm I'm getting like I want to a full time artist is sort of like my other big dream. <laughs> exactly, a passion like is making money. Exactly, that's cool. Workshop and machinery. Oh, so make sure you save as often as you can. Yeah, uh, workshop machinery. So I went to art school and I, I quit after a year because it was a bit of a joke. But one of the coolest things I learned was working with metal and a little bit of um, pouring bronze. And I also learned, well, I got a taste I, for it. Thank you. Hey, thanks. I got a taste for welding, which was cool. And what I learned, nice hairdo, man. Okay. I learned how hard it is to actually do a good weld. So it was like, you know, an arc weld, you wear the mask and it's like an acetylene torch or something. I can't remember what, anyway. And just to weld two pieces of metal is like, it's actually an art form to get the bead so it's perfect along the edge and stuff. And that was cool because I always wanted to make, um, oh, really? That's cool. Bronze D&D &D dice. Yeah, that, so that's what I learned is I got a huge respect for people who can do welding. And it turns out my cousin was like a master welder, and he used to do underwater diving welding. But he had to stop because of health reasons. Like, I think he has really bad diabetes, and there was something with deep sea diving and diabetes that fucked it, things up for him. But, but that was cool. It was a very crazy job. 
Would you like your followers to have a coffee, wine, listen to your stories? Would aspiring artists questions? No, hell no, man. I talk to people all the time. I'm I constantly am yapping away. Yeah. Yeah, go for it, man. I'm kind of, to be honest, I feel like taking a break. I've been going for, for about two hours on this one. And I spent a couple hours earlier today on it. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically wrapping this up because it's 8 o'clock and I've got to send upstairs. Thank you. Ash Williams. What's up? So go for it. Yeah. I'll see if I can find a picture of my digital album. Yeah, of course. But how would you show me? Oh, maybe you can um, send, put a link in there. Hey, what's up, Ash Williams? I started drinking this stuff. This it's called Zevia. Because I don't, I don't like drinking. I'm good. How are you? And it doesn't have any aspartame. It has a some other sweetener. So no sugar, no artificial sweetener. I thank you. Yes, Parmuto. I want to do that thing where I give away again. Saw you painting earlier. It looks great. Hey, thanks. Okay, let's try this giveaway thing again. Let's see if... So there's only a tiny bit in it. Okay. The light picture quality isn't yummy, great. Yummy, and ignore... Okay. Thanks, Ash. Yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy. <laughs> yummy, oh, I got four of them. So here's a real quick story. I was streaming on D Live and someone named Krusty Krusty Crunts or something. So he's like some well known D Live stream, whatever. He comes in. Okay, I'll, I'll give me one second and um Shadow Assassin. Let me let me I'll look at it one second. I just want to quickly tell the story. And you know, and what happened was I set up a sound like for the what's the most the simple lemon? And it was like, Thank you for the lemon. And he went in there and he Hi. fucking he blasted it like twenty times. So I had to sit there while I was going, Oh, thank you for the Thank you for the <laughs> Anyhow, so I, I had to change all the sounds to make them shorter. Okay, so let's look at this this link here. So this is Shadow Assassin's thing. Oh, right, the bronze. Oh, hey, those are very well done. Check that out. I got some stories about D&D that'll blow your minds. It'll blow your tiny little minds. Look at those. Those are great. I once got to play... D and D with Gary Gyax. When I was like about fifteen or so, I went to this after school program, and they, you got to, you, I did rocketry, magic, and and D and D, because two kids from each school was picked to go to this after school program, and I was picked. So, uh, and you could do all these weird like, like hobby things, and so I did magic, rocketry, and D and D, and then. Gary Gaix, for some reason, came in to... Uh, so Gary Gaix is one of the like, founders of D&D. He created like a lot of the modules. And... Um, and... Uh, anyhow, so he... Like, you ever played D&D and you read the old school modules? He's the guy who wrote like half of them. And you know, he came in and he was like, okay, I'm going to show you... I'm going to tr- test out my new... Uh, game and it was like a space based game. Magic, I used to be in that, but it's kind of expensive. Oh, so I met I met some of the magic guys. I met one of the guys, um, one of the founders of Magic. I was at Game Developers Conference. The guy is like worth like a half a like five hundred million dollars or something insane because they own the rights. Like you know how Magic the card game got? It was insane. So this guy, he was a pretty friendly guy. But he was like one of the founders of, of Magic the Gathering. And I didn't realize how fucking big it was. Like the guy was making like 50 million a year on royalties, doing nothing. It was crazy. Anyhow. But yeah, so Gary Gox, so I was a kid, and he tried out this module with us. Yeah, there she is. Hey, baby. How are you? Give me a kiss on the face. Hello. <laughs> oh. You're a good girl, aren't you? Yes, you are. Oh, I know. 
I know. Oh. She loves to look at me. Like, like, don't you? Yes, you do. Snort. Oh. Here, watch this. This is kind of cool. Um, give me a chew toy. Give me a chew toy. Put it in my hand. Where's the chew toy? Where's the chew toy? Give me a chew toy. Oh, oh, the ball. She loves it. Put the ball in my hand. Put the ball in my hand. You could do it. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, she sees a freaking golden retriever. She non-stop retrieving. Good girl. Good girl. Go get it. I better not start because she won't stop. <laughs> so, okay, I'll tell you something about game developers. We always take interest in people who play Are you kidding me like every game developer i've ever worked with game developers are some of the most passionate people and i think that a lot of people get it i think it's the problem is the companies it's the, it's the bigger companies where it's not as cool because the actual game developers the people who make the games are you know the artists and programmers don't have a lot of say in the political stuff so, game developers are generally pretty damn cool. I thank you. Check out one of my buddy's games. It's pretty cool. It's called We Happy Few. And uh, it's um, done on Xbox. I think, no, wait. Fuck it. I know it's PC. What is uh, We Happy Few is a cool game. I have the play. Yeah. Oh my God. I'll tell you. I used to read the player's handbook and monster manual. Just, I used to just read it. And, and when I was a kid, like all I wanted was Star Wars action figures and D and D modules. And I had no one to play with me. So I used to just make up, <laughs> I used to make up like, like characters. Okay. This is going to be like a level 16 half elf, half human fighter magic user. And then I did. <laughs> <laughs> I used to make D and D modules, and and I tried. There was people, just there was no one around to play. And I remember playing with one guy, Jasper Malcolmson, who was like two grades ahead of me. And and I remember going to his house and just being kind of weirded out. <laughs> and we never played after that. <laughs> and some of the D and D, I'm I'm sure I still I I still get chills thinking about D and D and 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 reading it and playing it. And and I have some cards. Somewhere packed away. I, I made my own dice. Like, you know how um, Shadow Assassin made like dice? Mine were made of wood and stuff. And uh, I have them. I think I have them upstairs somewhere. But god damn, d d sparked my imagination. So Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, d d completely. Um, yeah, yeah. And art, video games were are my main thing. But, you know, I also loved... Like I don't play D and D anymore, and uh, I just don't. Just I don't know. It's not something I have. I would do. I would totally do it, but that's it's a lot of goddamn work, and I don't feel like going places. But uh, yeah, art and video games are my main two things. Yeah, I run D and D sessions for local players. Always awesome welcoming new people in. Yeah, I, you know what? I would do it. I would still do it. I am certain I know people still play d and I'm just thinking I'm on Facebook. Um, who, who is it that still plays D&D? These are just like some old school characters. Uh, I, can, I can sort of picture them in my head. I have to go back and look. I just don't... I don't know. I just... Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty busy up already just doing this stuff like i'm gonna have i don't have much free time I, I use up all my free time doing doing this but uh yeah it's a lot of work it really is good when they learn it's all about the rules yeah exactly i mean i i can tell you i had uh i'm just trying to remember who i used to play D, &D with it must have been a couple friends when we were younger but i remember going to some places i remember going to a place and there were tables all set up and I, I mean, this is like 35 years ago or something. So I can't remember. But uh, yeah, D&D &D was just so much fun, especially if you were had a good dungeon master and you could weave the story and and uh, 
And sometimes it was the simplest things were the best, right? Just like the simplest moments. And that's like with some online video games. Like I've played so many, been so many moments where I've been online. And uh, yeah, I'm very old. I'm, I'm almost, I'm be 50. I'm almost, I just turned 49. I've had so many like moments in video games where I was like, wow, did that just happen? That was the coolest thing. Yeah, I'm an old damn fart. I'm actually looking forward to getting even older because I, I want to be an um, grumpy old man. I'm going to say, get off my lawn. Get off my lawn, you young punk. Yeah. All right. I think I should probably get going now. What time is it? 8.30. It's been fun. Okay. Let me go. Okay. How, let me try giving out these two little Lindo things. Wait, where is it? Click here. So if I just click this, it would be really, is it crap just to give away 2.2 .2 Lindos? That's kind of, that's kind of lame, right? Should I do that? Just donate these two last little ones or should I wait till it builds up? Cause I don't want to, please stop saying you're old. You're not 85. I know. I, I just like, I like saying that it's, I don't feel old. I feel very young. In fact, I look at people my age and I go, holy fuck, you look old. You're all gray haired, bald bastards. Um, you need five to open, I think. Minimum five. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to open them. All right. It's, it's, it's not lame. It's up to you, but build it up. That's what I do. Okay. Yeah, I'll build it up. Build it up. You can always do it directly to people. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> it saves up for a week. Thank you. Katri Yuzi. Ledzar. I love when people have like ridiculous names, like Anal Probe 2000, and it turns out it's like some like some completely <laughs> different personality. You ever go on Reddit and you read some of the names? They're just fucking hilarious. And they're having a, like a serious political debate, and it's, it's like, you know, I fucked your mom last night, two, 2009 or something. <laughs> oh, my God, that cracks me up. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, I love Reddit. I'm kind of addicted to Reddit. Some of those subreddits, though, I just can't stand. I just can't stand it. It's just so stressful to read them. There's there's two. Uh, I can't go on them because they're so extreme, and they're political ones. One is the politics one and the Donald something TD. Or I can't remember what it is. I thank you. Um, but when you go on there, they're so extremely like one-sided on, on whether they either completely hate Trump or they love Trump. It's just like, you, you can't like, and, and they're, they're always so incredibly biased about their point of view. And you never know, like if you're reading, like it's a bot or AI and stuff. But um, I honestly like going to awe, you know, the one about like cute dogs and stuff. I actually like, like I, I, I'll be there on my laptop, just going clicking through pictures of dogs. and shit. <laughs> I love it. And, uh, Actually, not long ago, I just was I just tried streaming something, and I thought it'd be like funny shit I'd find on Reddit, and and uh, I think um, I would do that, man. If people like want to like join me while I like find funny things on Reddit, I would totally do that because that that cracks me up, man. I mean, sometimes there's some great stuff. Like I I was showing my family on Sunday the video of the cat. Um, I forget the comedian's name, but he's like Ma Ma. This fucking stray cat. It's fucking, it's creeping me out, ma. <laughs> Let me show you this thing. Ah, uh, this is, that's what I kind of live for. Okay, let's go. Ma, creepy cat. I'm just going to try this. Here it is. <laughs> Here. Let me, let me make it bigger. I'll go full screen. And, uh, this is actually a, 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 it's actually a voiceover by a comedian who is this Brooklyn kind of guy. Okay. Wait, let me just make sure that you guys can see this. Is it on desktop? Okay. Let me go larger. Oops. Boop. Okay. Here we go. Enjoy this. What the fuck is that? What the fuck? Is that a fucking cat? Hey, don't fucking look at me. I have to run like that. That's a weird looking fucking cat. Ma! 
Yo, there's a stray cat outside. I don't want it starting a fight with Lucy. Lucy, it's okay. It's okay, Lucy. Don't worry about it. Ma! Ma, there's a weird fucking stray cat outside. It looks... It looks like grandma, the fucking thing. Hey, get the fuck out of here. I don't know if that's a fucking cat. Blink, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god man oh that, i love that shit i could just i can honestly woo. <laughs> yeah i like cats but i don't think i want to paint them I've, i don't really paint animals too much oh, you want to see some pictures of animals i've painted go to my website I don't think I've ever... Oh, I think I've drawn a cat once when I was a kid. I think I did one drawing of a cat. So I'm just going to go to my website. I'm changing the whole thing because it's so goddamn slow. It's on a... Wait. Oh, it's in the wrong place. Oh, anyhow, I'm going to go to gallery by subject. I'll go by animals. I haven't done a lot of animals, but I've done some... Oh, there's a cat. That was my friend's cat. My friend's cat and dog, so I did that. This was my parrot. I used to have a parrot. Let's go back. There was my dog when I was a kid. There was my dog when I was a kid, too. My other dog. Let's go back in time. This has, like, has, like lots of stuff from even when I was, like, down to, like, age five or something. Like, these... Okay. So here's, the, I think, the only actual drawing I think I've done of a kid... A uh, 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 cat. And I was probably young... I'm going to, let's find out how old. I was 13. So there's the cat I've done when I was 13. That's it. There's my cat. And this is, well, there's a frog. I actually like this. This is kind of simple. It's just, I don't know, out of the blue, I did this like these two elephants at night. And it was kind of neat. Two elephants at night. It's so simple. It's actually kind of large. 36 by 60 inches. It's gouache. I did when I was 28, 1998. Nothing that special. Yeah. There you go. All right. That cat looks so funny. Yeah. Meow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting a whole bunch of gifts. Yeah, that's a hilarious gift. What's that guy's name? That is a good video. Maybe I'm just going to leave it there. That, let's leave it on a high note. That was a funny, funny-ass video. Ma! It's kind of like... Remember Wedding Crashers when the guys... Will Ferrell's, Ma! Meatloaf! Get me some meatloaf! All right. I think all you young punks, you need to get to bed. Damn it. It's late. It's 8.30. I'm ready for I'm ready for bed. You know you're an old fart when, you're, when it's 8.30 and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go to bed. All right. Okay, I'll work on this a little bit later. See if I can turn it something better. Anyhow, it was nice to chat with y'all. Take it easy. Peace out. See ya. Now I gotta figure out how to turn this thing off. Pew. Gotta turn that off here. Okay, here's the off button. Okay, bye.